Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about The Witcher, which, disclaimer, we haven't watched it yet. Oh no, I want to see it, but I haven't had time to sit down to watch The Witcher. To watch The Witcher? Watch The Witcher. We haven't had a, a chance to watch it yet, so we're not going to give you a review of The Witcher because we haven't seen it yet. Apparently, that doesn't stop people from giving professional reviews via certified media outlets uh, if you don't actually watch the show you're reviewing. Right. Um, so there's a controversy about The Witcher. The Witcher was given a very, very scathing review by Entertainment Weekly, which is, you know, a pretty notable, pretty notable magazine. They didn't even bother watching it. They didn't bother watching They watched like two and a half episodes and then they just speculated what would happen. Gave it an F. Yeah. And then uh, just moved on. So now everybody is calling them out because it's kind of a bullshit dick move. It is. When you're paid Wait, to... Wait, the media did a bullshit dick move? Right, right. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, like they go around calling fans names and stuff because they don't like the, something they personally like because any more of these platforms are just their personal pedestal to shout from. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm like, when you're paid to give a review, and that's your job, you're, mm -hmm. you're paid working for a publication like Entertainment Weekly, which has some clout, to give a review, this isn't like you know a Tumblr blog. Mm -hmm. you, you should at least watch the damn show. And well, then anymore, is there much of a difference? There is no difference. And that's Let's what we honest. want to talk about. That's what we want to talk about. We'll talk about how this has been going on in gaming journalism for a while too. Yes, but meanwhile, they they go into Twitter to announce all their credentials. We're real journalists, unlike those people on YouTube, because here's our credentials. We'll talk about that in a minute. But go yeah. ahead and do your spiel. There's there's a bunch of that going on right now. So before we get into it, please subscribe to more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're at uh, eighty five thousand ish Almost, subs, yeah, and uh, hoping for a hundred thousand soon. Thank you so much for the support. So yeah, let's talk about what the hell happened with Entertainment Weekly. They admitted they gave it a, a, a zero out of a hundred after admitting Wait, zero out of a hundred. <laughs> oh yeah, my god, a zero out of a hundred after admitting to skipping episodes. One of the critics wrote, because life's too short for Netflix drama running times, I skipped ahead to the fifth episode. I, I'm curious to see what these, these, what these people were review, other things they reviewed. I bet you money, it's the typical stuff you'd expect. Well, that's what they're talking about. The, um, they're talking about the divide between critics and audiences mm -hmm. anymore. And I, I think it a lot of times comes down to politics. And we're seeing more and more that a lot of these journalists, I know uh, I saw some tweets the other day from some people at uh, one, one of the big comic book news sites, basically bragging about how everybody who worked for that site had some sort of legit degree in journalism right. and that you need to listen to them because they're the authorities on comic book reviews because they all have journalism degrees. And I'm like, okay, so yeah. what was the point of this? What was the point of this? Well, meanwhile, we keep getting, you know, people are like, Come, making we're not journalists, but you were an editor for a couple of publications. We worked together for um, on a couple of publications. We have our own publication, our own, well, our blogs and stuff, which are in Google News and have been early on. Yeah. But you know, what do we know? We, we're not, what we're we not know? real journalists, you know? Yeah. I actually started out, I actually started out as a journalist uh, working for newspapers. Remember those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember those? Yep. Uh, but yeah, I was actually the managing editor for a, uh, a weekly newspaper and I was an editor for a daily newspaper and they were actual real newspapers printed on paper when they used to do that. Yeah. Back in the day. Back but in the day. We, we, you know, but anyway, you know, anyway, if I was going to get paid to give a review, I would have at least watch the right answer. right because you know that's your job that's fair that's fair uh but yeah they're talking about how batwoman has a 61 percent divide uh the last jedi has a 48 percent divide with the audience scores and the critical scores and they said even with this reduced level of trust many fans were shocked by entertainment weekly's review of the witcher and are slamming it for being unprofessional and a dumpster fire of journalism well have you been on a lot of these blogs i'm just saying are these these platforms anymore and, and it's even legitimate platforms are going that way because of you know frankly some of the people they're hiring so yeah, that's anyways. that's it they're, they're you know look when you start hiring people from tumblr or people who think that that's <laughs> you know yeah i get to work for this place so i can spread my activism or yeah. my, my personal opinions um i can slam on fans because i didn't like the movie i liked you know that kind of thing you run into this kind of problem so the review is written by two critics, Kristen Baldwin and uh, Darren. Wait, there's Frenich. two critics on one review, and neither one. Bothered neither one of them could bother. They couldn't even say, "Hey, let's divide it up. You watch the four first four. Uh, I'll watch the last four, and we'll compare notes, so we don't have to waste our time." Baldwin suggests she only watch the first two episodes of the eight episode season, and first she only watched the second episode in the interest of professional obligation. Uh, Franick writes that he watched episode one, then because life's too short for Netflix, I skipped ahead to the fifth episode. 
after episode five, Franick stopped watching the show and finishes the review with an assumption, an assumption about what will happen in the season finale that he didn't watch. Despite only watching three episodes of The Witcher between them and only two episodes each, both Baldwin and Franick gave it an F grade. Entertainment Weekly's lowest rating, which is described as an F given to something utterly without redemption. A D is a warning and F is condemnation. It's the critics' curse. So, so you're giving around Fs. Okay, so like you didn't even do your job and you're giving around Fs. It's like, could you imagine doing this for anything else? Like I'm a teacher. I'm just going to go around and give an S to, on, on all the papers, even though I didn't actually grade them because I read the first sentence or two and then I decided the whole thing was worthless and I, my life's too short to actually do my job. So I just marked all the kids' papers with Fs. How far do you think that would go? That reminds me of, um, since we're getting close to Christmas, Christmas story, mm -hmm. F. 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 No, he did like A plus. A, A plus, 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 plus. So, yeah, I mean, look, if this was anybody else, anybody else in any other publication, it might even be, you might even be able to be like, I, I was bored, I didn't watch it, I can't give it a grade, or, or grade each individual episode. Mm -hmm. Episode one, I'm going to give it an F because it didn't, you know, but to be fair, I didn't watch the whole series. We've done that. We, you know, we do very few reviews on this channel, but we did a comic book review of the uh, Rainbow Bright comic. Oh yeah. And we said, the, the, yeah. we actually read the whole series, but the first comic, we're just like, I, we can't give it a grade because we haven't read enough yet. Right. That's what we, that's what we said. Know? And by the second, we we're still trying to be fair, but it was kind of getting ridiculous. And then by the third, it was like, oh, hell no. So Twitter is pissed. Uh, Entertainment Weekly gave The Witcher a zero. One of the most unprofessional reviews ever. Not only being, being biased, but uh, the two reviewers watched one episode. Uh, Entertainment Weekly gave Witcher a 0 out of 10. They watched two episodes and skipped episode 5. Uh, and they call it nakedly terrible because they were apparently offended that there were boobs. Yeah. Uh, that's I, I just want to know, is I haven't got to watch Witcher yet, but if there are boobs, they better have some, uh, some of Henry's butt shots or it's not fair. They don't need to have Henry's butt shots. Yes, they do, because they have boob shots. That just makes it fair for me. So then it's just The Witcher, tits and ass. That's right. To Netflix. I'm just saying, just to make it fair, because you get all these movies, okay? Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. And they always have the obligatory boobs shot. And it's like, you know, okay, that's great. You know, she's got a nice rack go her. But then it's like, you know, why, where is it for us? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. You can you can take a look at uh, Henry Cavill's ass. But... Oh, no, I'm just saying. It's, I'm just saying. It's, it's all about, you know, equity here. It's what I'm talking about. I'm talking well, about equity. Well, we all know how There's much... A bunch of dudes out there who are agreeing with me as well who probably. want to see his butt too i mean it's not just me and there's a lot of women out there who probably want to see the boob shots i'm just saying yeah so this equity is people well, equity. there there there's his covered ass uh for your enjoyment um but but yeah, yeah I, I like your butt best but well, i'm just you. saying I, my, my ass is awesome your ass is awesome anyway i've been working hard on my ass <laughs> lately i've been working hard on my ass i've been on that stepper like four days a week uh, anyway <laughs> When our president come, if they ever go any place to see us, they're going to expect you to turn so they can see your ass. They're going to expect a glorious ass. My and mom's be watching this. And come, you know, Christmas Eve, she's going to be taking six sneak peeks at your butt to see if you're No, that, your stop, ass. stop <laughs> Don't talking. Don't do that, Mom. I'm just Stop kidding. talking <laughs> right now. We're going to stop. Uh, no offense, uh, Mama Sparkles, but we're going <laughs> to stop with the talk. It's, she's not going to do that. So, okay, this this is happening more and more, though. This is an isolated incident. He slashes and smooches. Why is this a bad thing? Well, okay, he <laughs> slashes and smooches. But this this is not the first time this has happened. This seems to be happening more and mm -hmm. more. Yeah, it does. Um, I remember last year, I think it was last year, there were actually, no, it was earlier in the year, there were actually a lot of uh, you know controversies around IGN. IGN, you know, used to be a pretty reputable gaming site. Now they're not. They're a Tumblr blog, basically. And they had reviewers giving negative reviews to games that they had not played through or didn't understand how it worked. They had reviewers giving reviews of games, I guess, that, that they had just gone through the tutorial. Like, right. I only played four hours, but I think the game sucks. So, you know, here we go. Um, and they, they have also been accused of plagiarism, like just outright plagiarizing YouTube videos and small. Oh, sites. I remember that. Yeah, for Dead Cells, which is freaking. I awesome. remember that. I do Dead remember Cells that. Is awesome. Well, speaking of IGN, though, they did they did cite us on their their Latin America. They did. Shit. They so, did. You know, at you least know. IGN. So the La Latin America obviously is you know high quality. No, I'm just that's kidding. right. That's I'm right. Just kidding. But no, I mean this is a trend that's going on, and I think I think it comes down. I mean, look, I'll be honest. I think some of it might be. Uh, some of it might be like political or whatever. I think some of it is is financial. I think that they're not these reviewers because blogs are declining. 
they're not getting paid as much as they used to, so they have to crank out more content. Well, I'm thinking that's just it. It's like a, it's a crunch thing. It goes down to the whole crunch and the time issue. Yeah. It's like I have, you know, five hours. I got to do work. Should I go watch five hours of this video, do one review and get one story in? Or do I go write, you know, seven or eight stories right. for, you know, the five publications I work for to get all that money? What happens is the whole site, though, comes under fire. Mm -hmm. When people do this, I mean, I understand. Again, you don't want to spend eight hours of your life watching a show you don't like mm -hmm. just to give it a negative review anyway. But now the whole site's credibility has been shot. They'll just give us a bad grade on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's Entertainment Weekly. This is a, yeah, this is a big deal. This isn't like, again, this isn't a Tumblr blog. Yeah. Uh, this is a big deal. This is so, like a small YouTube channel like ours. This is like Entertainment right. Weekly. Right. And, you know, people just expect more from, from an outlet like this that has a reputation like this that carries the weight that they do. So I don't know what the fallout from this is going to be, but I have noticed in the last year or two, especially, that this has been happening more and more. And there is a definitely a divide between journalists and the rest of us. Yeah. And we're seeing it on Twitter. Uh, I mean, geez, we're talking just on Twitter. We're seeing people that have like a thousand followers but because they write for some website, they get a blue check. I know. It's ridiculous. It's uh, like, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's hot. And then you see people who have like, you know, a lot of, you know, followers, legitimate followers or have a big channel and they can't get a blue check because they're not the right type of person. Yeah. This happens a lot. Um, and I think it's just, it's basically about controlling, controlling the media, mm -hmm. you know, and controlling and, the narrative. Right. Right. Um, and let's be honest. It's all about ele next election. Cause that's about what it is. Which is stupid. Cause we're talking about pop culture. And Should, we're not even political usually. Uh, yeah. So. It shouldn't have anything to do with pop culture, but we're, we're seeing there's definitely uh, some issues going on here, but these journalists, I, I think, you know, they basically had rule of the roost for years, even mm -hmm. with YouTube, mm -hmm. they've, they've been the go-to authority and now their authority is, is being chipped away at. And, you know, people are going to YouTube for news and they're going to other outlets for news. And a lot of these old standby blogs and, and magazines especially are declining. Right. They're declining. Well, this so. is funny because this actually brought out the showrunner. Um, yeah. I thought was kind of, and I don't blame the showrunner. Yeah, I think this is kind of cool. So Lauren S. Hisrich, is it mm -hmm. Hisrich, doesn't seem to take the critics' reviews of the series to heart and instead cares more about what real fans think, uh, as does Henry Cavill, who actually mm -hmm. defended, uh, quote, unquote, passionate fans. Many people have sweetly written me upset about the Witcher reviews. Um, she said, know this, who do I care about? Professional critics who watched one episode right. and skipped ahead or real fans who watched all eight in a day and are starting their rewatch. I'm effing thrilled. Mm -hmm. Effing thrilled. Right. And the thing is, one thing that gets me though is I hate, I'm tired of this whole in quotes thing is the fans where it could be like, you know, everybody who said D the last Jedi, Oh, the real fans liked it. Um, you know, if you didn't like the last day, you weren't a real fan. And I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying she's saying this, what she's saying is a real fan's going to actually watch it and be fair is what they're saying. It's not just about you like it because you're a fan because you like it. Cause I'm sure there's some fans that are fans of the Witcher that don't like the show. Yeah. I mean, look, there's been a lot of controversy about it and people are going to say the same thing about us. They're going to be like, well, you guys didn't watch Rise of Skywalker. I'm like, no, we know enough about it that I just, but we're not going to review it either. You know, I'm not going to sit here and give you yeah, a review. Yeah, if I end up Skywalker. watching it, which I might at some point, I will do a review, but I'm not going running out to do, to watch it. But um, that's why we're not reviewing The Witcher in this video because we haven't seen it yet. But what we're telling you is, you know, real fans, that, I, I hate when they do that real fans, like, you know, if you don't like it, you're not a real fan. That's not, that's not true in most cases. I think what they're referring to here in real fans is people who actually watch the show and, you know, actually yeah. sat through it to give a real opinion on what is going on. Well, clearly, clearly Entertainment Weekly, not fans. Uh, they just weren't, weren't interested in this show at all. Um, and again, and why did they just give it to somebody else that, that worked there to review it that was actually interested in watching it? That's a damn good question. I don't know. There's a, th this raises this whole thing raises a lot of questions. Again, studios, you need to realize these media outlets are not your friends. No, you know, look what they did to Joker. Look what they did. Now they're all turning on Star Wars. You know, because it the last movie it went depends against on the outlet, but yeah. Right. Uh, they went against the the uh, last Jedi. So now they're turning against. If you do anything that they don't like, well, if here. you work with anybody they don't like, here even here they had. Oh, where was it? It was in the the trending. Rise of Skywalker's big rewrite ruins what made the last Jedi great. I mean, right there is what we're talking about. That kind of stuff. And I mean, you know, I, I, I'm just tired of hearing um, if you don't like something that, that some author likes that, you know, there's something wrong with you. There's people who disagree with us all the time. And that is completely fine. We say it all the time. You know what? You may don't like it. You like it. That's cool. We like it. You don't like it. Also, also cool. 
you know, you do you. You don't owe us your your uh, like or dislike. We no. don't owe you our like or dislike. All we have to do is be like, you know, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean because we liked it and you didn't, or vice versa, that you know we can't it can't be discussed. Or there are other things that we both agree on. You know, that's what that's what our big point. That's what made us start this whole channel, and, and mostly was that we're so tired of this this narrative. That if you don't agree that there's something wrong with you and then then it goes into belittlement and name calling, you know, trying to guilt you by saying you're a bad person. It's like, I didn't, it's a damn show. I didn't like it or I liked it. That doesn't make me this, that or every bad word because I liked it or didn't like it. Yeah, it's gotten ridiculous. I mean, it used to be that you could, again, watch TV shows, watch entertainment uh, for escapism. Mm -hmm. And now you can't get away, you can't get away from it. If you, you didn't like it, you just didn't watch it. No, you just didn't watch it. But, but you were allowed uh, to say you didn't like it. But it's crazy. This is this is crazy. And I think we're going to see... I mean, Entertainment Weekly is going to come under the microscope for this one. I think... I don't know if there's going to be any repercussions. But they definitely... The site's credibility has taken a hit. The magazine's credibility has taken a hit. And we saw what happened with IGN, too. You know, they had two, two or three big fiascos earlier this year that led to a lot of gamers saying, hey, you can't trust IGN anymore. Right, and, and that's you what know? happens. You become, you, you're not a trusted site anymore. And, no. you know, it is what it is. And you can't blame everybody else for your, your missteps. Yep, but uh, I, get, I guarantee you those authors will... Those reviewers will get to keep their blue checks. Yes, and they'll get to go bash <laughs> yeah. everybody else yeah. who likes it. Because if you like this, then you're a misogynist. You are a homophobe. You are a racist for whatever reason. You are whatever is is popular this week. And you're a bad person. I'm going to bully you. And then scream at you. If you, if you say anything back, you're bullying me. <sighs> All right. So it's I'm... It's for the children. <laughs> I think we're going to I think we're gonna uh, wrap this up. Yeah, Witcher's not for the children. Witcher's not for the children. <laughs> no, it's not. Asses are not for children. Maybe for, they say it's for well, the man babies, so I guess in man that babies. regard. All right, so we're going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. <laughs> Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.